when two unlikely enemies have to work together to find their way back home, and in the end they realize that they do indeed have a friend within themselves. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're just some uncultured swine. (laughs) This week we ask, is Toy Story a good movie? Welcome back to the podcast where every week we're on a quest to curate the best movie collection. In a time when your favorite movies are constantly fluctuating through multiple streaming services, it's important to decide which movie has earned a spot in the collection. So join us every week as we ask a question, but is it a good movie? I'm your host, Ish, and with me is my co-host, Nick. That's me. All right, Nick, so we watched the 1995 film Toy Story. Such a good year. I was born then. I was born too. (laughs) Oh my god. So, I have some weird, like, history with this movie. We know. (laughs) Well, I know. They don't know, but I know. Alright, so before we get into, like, the meat of this podcast, I just want to bring up that as a kid, I did not watch this movie that often, so I don't have the, like the same connection a lot of people do with this movie and solely for the reason of i once saw a commercial for the vhs of this movie and it scared the shit out of me as a kid and it's a very scary trailer (laughs) yeah so he showed me the trailer i'll say like maybe like a couple months ago and i have it right here so i'll play it for you all right nick If you're staying home this Halloween, you can still scare up all the thrills you need with Disney's Toy Story on video. It's not for the squeamish. And it's not for the weak-hearted. I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. Because the movie you've been waiting to get is the video that's just dying to get to you. So play nice. Disney's Toy Story on video October 29th. Rated G. How is that that how is that not scary? Yeah, so after I've never seen that trailer, <laughs> but after watching it, I get it. Yeah. I do get it. They do pick a lot of the parts of the movie where I don't know, it is a little scary, you know, like the toys coming to life, mm-hmm. Woody turning his head around, shit oh, like yeah. that. So yeah, it is a little you know, a little if you're a little taut, yeah. It could be a little scary. Especially like they're like if you it's halloween and you want to scare it's like if you've never heard of this movie before and that's your first instance of it absolutely terrifying but i want to know like so i didn't watch this movie until way later on because i eventually ended up seeing it in like doctor's office or something and then i was like okay it's not that scary so i i asked my dad to like rent it from blockbuster and stuff so eventually i saw it but i want to know do you remember the first time you ever watched Toy Story? Probably not the first time, but I do remember watching this movie quite a bit. I was one of those kids that got attached to a movie and would just kind of like play it a lot. Mm. And then like after you like you like wore out the tape, mm-hmm. you'd move on to the next one. Okay. So I believe the VHS copy of Toy Story I had growing up does not work anymore. So whatever Goodwill or Salvation Army currently has it, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. <laughs> So you had like um like a like a connection to this movie as a kid. Oh fuck yeah. I I never dressed up as any of the characters for Halloween, but I always wanted to be Woody. Woody? Oh yeah. but my mom would never buy me the costume. Okay. I think it was about um gay cowboys or something. <laughs> and she was afraid. Yeah, because I was gonna ask you, were you are you Team Woody or Team Buzz? So. When I was a kid, I was Team Woody. Uh huh. I was like, how dare this fucking space ranger come in and ruin everything? Yeah, what an absolute fuck. <laughs> but as I got older, probably like when I was a teenager, now adult, mm-hmm. Woody sucks. Oh yeah, he's kind of a shithead. Um, so I'm definitely more Team Buzz. Yeah, but I'm also just more Team Andy's toys. Yeah, like the entourage, yeah. Yeah, because, like, they suffer from Woody's actions in mm-hmm. all these movies. <laughs> they do. Um, I want to give you, like, a little backstory on Toy Story and, I guess, Pixar. Because this movie has 
had like a rough start to it, right? Oh my god, it went yeah. through so many phases. So like, this all started back in like late seventies, eighties, like this whole project, and it started with um, a guy called John Lasseter, which is a very uh, problematic dude, <laughs> and he's, which is such a shame because he's such he's so involved in a lot of like childhood movies and stuff. And it's 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 terrible that he just um, turned out to be such an awful prick. But he started working at Disney during a time when a lot of like the younger people working there were leaving, and they were going with Don Bluth to go work on one of his films. So all that was left at Disney was like a bunch of like the old farts and stuff. So when he started working there, they put him to work on, I think Mickey's Christmas Carol. And. He saw some of his friends were working on Tron. And Tron has some pretty impressive CGI for the time. So when um, Lasseter saw what they were working on, he was like, this is it. This is like the future right here. So he tried to pitch this idea for a movie uh, called The Brave Little Toaster. Which <laughs> if you, we should throw that on the wheel eventually. <laughs> and he pitched that and he was also secretly working on uh an adaptation of where the wild things are with this like cgi the disney folks found out were pissed because they like they could not see this going anywhere so they fired him damn he left ended up working with lucasfilm and eventually um at pixar and at the time steve jobs was fired from apple Invested a lot of money in Pixar and ended up basically owning Pixar and like making a lot of the calls there. And when Pixar originally was founded, it was like a supercomputer. That was like the Pixar computer. And they were like selling that to businesses and stuff. So they could like, uh, I think it was like for like presentations and stuff because they could like animate things. Before PowerPoint was cool, they were using Pixel like, yeah. PowerPoint. <laughs> so... Uh, While John Lasseter was working at Pixar, he worked on showcasing what this computer was capable of, and he made this short called A Tin Man. I don't know if you saw it. Never seen it. It's the one with, like, the really ugly baby that's, like, he looks like a 30-year-old man, but it's, like, a disgusting baby model. He's chasing around, like, a little tin um, band guy. No, I've never seen that before. (laughs) Well... Ended up being super impressive. Impressed all the folks at, like, Disney. And they were like, fuck, we shouldn't have fired this Lasseter guy. He's like, he's really good. Yeah. So they ended up proposing a partnership. And, like, Disney and Pixar would work on this project together. Which ended up being Toy Story. When when they were working on this project, uh, this guy called Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was a chairman of Disney, kind of took over. And wanted Disney, this movie to be something else. He wanted it to be edgier. And something for, like, teens and stuff. And he basically wanted all the characters to be, like, assholes. <laughs> and when Laster showed the movie, like, uh, half of it, to all, like, the Disney people, they hated the movie. And He's like, like, those aren't my toys. Yeah, they were like, none of the characters were likable. They were like, <laughs> why are they all fucking assholes? And they're like, well, because Katzenberg, like, fucked up the whole thing. And this isn't, like, his movie anymore. This is, like, something else. And Disney wanted to trash this movie. And they were like, fuck it. We're not making Toy Story. But Steve Jobs kept putting money in it. So he was like, I'll fund the movie. So he was funding the movie basically on his own. And they start from the beginning. Did a bunch of rewrites. Got Joss Whedon involved. And ended up making this movie. And I feel like the reason that Steve Jobs was so in, interested in this is because he wanted to put Pixar, like, public, which ended up happening once Toy Story came out. Gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was going to say, usually when I talk about, like, what's your favorite Disney movie to people, they usually go, well, Disney or Pixar, Disney, mm-hmm. you know? So, I th- and I think, like, that's definitely, like, the line gets drawn right there. Yeah, which is crazy because it's, like, from the beginning – Toy Story, I mean, like, Disney and Pixar were working together, but I don't think Disney actually bought 
Pixar until 2006. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because so, of, yeah. So Pixar went off and made a couple of movies before they got, like, yeah. officially purchased? I think, like, the deal was, um, like, these characters would belong to Disney, but Pixar would have the rights to make sequels and stuff. And, okay. Like, they have, like, certain rights to it. Okay. It's, it was, like, this big contract that, like, Steve Jobs and Disney were, like, arguing about for years. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that's like a little backstory on Toy Story and how it like this movie came to be, which I thought was kind of interesting because it's like it's one of those things where Toy Story is such a classic movie. It's iconic. It's iconic and it changed so much. And without like this guy and without like Steve Jobs contributing, like Pixar might have not became anything because like people oh, God, were buying no. the computers. They were too expensive. Yeah, I think Pixar definitely paved the way for, like, the Pixar feel, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because there's movies now, like Disney movies and even other animated movies, where I go, did, did Pixar make this? Yeah. Because, like, it had such, like, a unique kind of, like, vibe, if that makes sense. Because, mm-hmm. like, I don't, I can't pick it out, obviously. Like, what, but, like, you know it when you feel it. Yeah. And I think it all comes down to how the characters look Mm -hmm. they look odd at the same time like woody has a big head buzz has a small head like nothing is like equal across the board they all look like they came from different toy manufacturers Mm -hmm. and then when you look at other disney movies versus pixar movies you have like the disney and pixar feel yeah and i feel like that's like every character on screen in a pixar movie they look different yeah because i feel like at the time right disney did not had their own thing up until i want to say like frozen maybe then that's when like they were like okay we're on par with pixar but yeah. frozen was also a lasseter movie was it <laughs> yeah wow so it's this very problematic lasseter guy. must have like his wallet lined with more wallets yeah because like, like it feels like everything he kind of i know he's problematic mm-hmm. but i feel like everything he like is a part of mm-hmm. blows up pretty big then yeah I, I he ended up like leaving disney and pixar because of all the scandals and i think he's like at blue sky now mm. they probably keep him in a private closet somewhere yeah. so yeah you were talking about like the pixar feel right yes so i feel like most kids movies try to at least like the successful ones right they try to relate to both kids and adults a hundred and ten percent and i want to ask do you think this first pixar movie toy story do you think that did a good job at executing that so there is i'd say so yeah Mm -hmm. there's a nice fun line between the stuff that like you notice as a kid and things you don't notice as a kid like when mr potato head takes his lips off Mm -hmm. while woody's talking and he like kisses his ass with yeah. it basically it's like kids will not understand what that means it's all you know i don't know and so like the little like things like that i'm like that's made for adults mm-hmm. and i feel like there's characters that are made for kids and characters that are made for adults like ham mish potato head and maybe like a little couple extra of the entourage are like more geared towards like the adults because they have like the quips and yeah. like the asshole nature, while well, like Buzz and Woody are like the forefront made for kids. That these are the ones that are gonna sell the toys. Yeah, obviously. I don't think any kid I knew was like I'm Team Mr. Potato Head or mm-hmm. I'm Team Ham or when I am Team Slink, hundred and ten percent. Oh, I love Slink. Slink is like such a good boy. I know he's he's like the faithful companion, who is like always oh, gonna he's mm. he's that guy that like will see you changing a tire and mm-hmm. he'll be he'll pull over and be like you need a hand bud you know what i like about slink is how gruff his voice is <laughs> i know like i wish i could do a slink voice he's like hey woody <laughs> 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 no that's my good pal uh, right there <laughs> he has that smoker's cough <laughs> <laughs> yeah like speaking of like um slink's voice this movie had, like, such an all-star cast. Oh, my God. All the people, right? Like, we have, like, Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head. And then we have Jim Varney as Slinky. And then Wallace Shawn as Rex. Which is, I think, his voice is my favorite. Rex? Yeah, I love how Rex is just, like, this, like, very 
anxious dude. Yeah, he's like always on edge. He's like, yeah, like do you think I'm too, like I don't, I'm not too fierce enough, and it's just like he's like always worried that he's gonna get replaced. Yeah, when they're trying to figure out what Andy got for his birthday, he's like, don't be a dinosaur, don't mm-hmm. be a dinosaur. He just goes, I can't compete with that. Yeah. <laughs> I know he has like another line towards the end of the movie where he's like, "Ah, oh, great, now I feel guilt." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Oh no, I feel guilty now," and uh, that just really needs to be so hard. And then, like at the end of the movie, he's like, "If it's a dinosaur, let it be a herbivore, mm-hmm. so I could be like the alpha male." Yeah, <laughs> but like the way he says it is like he's still not sure. Mm-hmm. So, like this movie, um, in case anyone hasn't seen it, it's about this toy named Woody. Who's a cowboy. He's a cowboy, and he's kind of like the leader of Andy's toys, right? And he's like um, the pe- the thing, the person he- everyone looks up to and kind of respects. And he- his whole thing is that he's Andy's favorite. Yeah, he's like the mayor of Andy's room. Yeah. So um, things get stirred up a little bit. When on Andy's birthday, he receives a present, which ends up being this, like, new fangled, like, space toy, and everyone fucking loves it, and Woody feels resentment, so he ends up causing an accident, which causes Buzz, the spaceman, to fall out the window, and then everyone hates him for it. And then Woody has to kind of go on this little, like... Maj Paj adventure to mm-hmm. get Buzz back to Andy's room and also get himself back mm-hmm. so that he, they could continue the, I don't know, the, the peace and harmony of Andy's room. Yeah. And they have to do this quick as possible because Andy's family is moving. Mm-hmm. So we get to go to a couple different random locations. And uh, yeah, I feel like this movie is pretty much just kind of like okay how, wait we're going to a pizza place now okay yeah and now we're not at the pizza place anymore and then we're here and we're there it, it moves very quick oh yeah. it's not a very long movie no it's not i think it's only like um 85 minutes yeah so which, it's hour and 20 minutes so it crushes the locations quick yeah which like there is no part where i got whiplash from this movie but there were there was a moment where I was like, wait, I thought they stayed in Pizza Planet for a lot longer than just this. No, it's it's insane. Um, rewatching this movie, I didn't realize how short of a movie it really is. It's very quick. Yeah, but I think it's like by the time it gets to Pizza Planet, I'm like, oh, fuck. I think this movie's like almost over. Yeah, it's like Pizza Planet is like midway. Mm -hmm. because after pizza planet is when we get like the real like i guess the climax to woody and buzz's like relationship because at the start obviously woody's like fuck that dude and then buzz is just kind of like i'm not a toy i'm a spaceman and Mm -hmm. everyone falls in love with him because he's like chill and like woody's not chill Mm -hmm. you know he's holding town meetings for like plastic erosion yeah and like he makes everyone get a moving body and he's like He's very smart and practical for a goddamn toy. Yeah. But everyone's like, you could tell people are like sick of his shit, especially like Ham and Mitch Potato Head. Yeah, which is like, I don't know if this is a that much of a hot take, but this movie doesn't have like a traditional villain, I would say. But I think Woody is the true villain of Toy Story. I don't know if you agree with that or not. I can agree that, yeah, yeah, Woody's the villain. Woody, for sure, right? Because Woody is, like, I, I, he's not, like, a like a traditional villain, but he is, like, such a spiteful bitch yeah. the entire movie. Yeah, because Woody, I'd say, is the, is the problem child. Yeah. But I would say the real villain, I guess, mm-hmm. the not even villain, but the real cause of, like, these actions is nobody likes change no that's like a theme throughout all of toy story is like dealing with change and how change can like uproot Mm -hmm. you know so much 
which I think I think is cool that the family is moving. Mm-hmm. Like that's a big change. Andy just had a birthday. That's a big change. Yeah, you know, like every year around the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Because it's like, I feel like this movie, movie's like main theme is like fear, and it's like the anxiety and like the just like unknown of what's to happen next. Yes, and like the fear of being forgotten or being let go yeah which is like super deep human emotions Mm -hmm. because like as a kid you don't feel that stuff unless like you're at the supermarket with your mom and like she moves to another aisle too quick and you're like she left me yeah you know that's probably like one of the few times that like a normal kid feels the forgotten part yeah but the fear of change i didn't really start seeing that till like later in my life like almost in my 20s (laughs) yeah no it's it's kind of crazy how even though Woody is supposed to be like, I don't know if he's supposed to be, but I see him as the villain of the movie. You do feel for him just because of how Tom Hanks like portrays Woody and like just like Woody's eyes show a lot of emotion. Yeah. And he, I feel like he does a lot of the things he does out of fear because he's scared, right? Oh, God. Yeah. He, and we later find out in like the second movie that Woody's been in the family for years. Yeah. And then we'll find out next week mm-hmm. when Woody was popular. Because, mm-hmm. like, I think it's cool. Because when you were growing up, was space big for you? I feel like... Was that big around your friend group and stuff? Because I feel like... I talked to my brother, actually, mm-hmm. like, today about this. Mm-hmm. I was like, when you were growing up, because he, he was old. He's eight. He'd be, he'd be eight when this movie came out. And he said space men and stuff like that were like all the rage so i think it's cool that like here it's like you have an old-timey toy that's Mm -hmm. been the family forever and then he gets the newest and latest yeah which we don't see too much of that happening for the rest of the series really no you know as a kid i think um dinosaurs and cars were really popular yeah well that's like the boy thing cars yeah i feel like every boy who played with toys you Mm -hmm. got a car at least one hot wheel and one off brand Mm -hmm. so since we're on the topic of like toys and stuff i want to ask you did you have any toys that you absolutely adored as a kid that like stand out to you it's like that was my woody oh my god okay so i had this pikachu toy okay and it was fat Pikachu. It's uh-huh. so like old school. Mm-hmm. And you would press its like hands mm-hmm. and the cheeks would light up. And I used to carry that thing everywhere. Really? For like the longest time. Yeah, I was diehard Pokemon. And still pretty much am. Mm-hmm. I just don't carry Pikachu with me anymore. Yeah. Man, as a kid, I was like... I had a couple of like loves, right? I love dinosaur toys. Like, so every time we would go to, like, flea markets or swap meets, we would always pick up, like, a new dinosaur toy because there was, like, five cents, ten cents. But the two toys that I vividly remember always carrying around with me was a Gizmo plush and a Winnie the Pooh plush. That's cool. And as a kid, I adored <clears throat> Winnie the Pooh. I don't know why. Like, later on in life, I was like, is that considered, like, a girl thing to, like, Winnie the Pooh or, like... It felt, like, embarrassing, especially in middle school, but I really like this, like, Winnie the Pooh plush because I had it ever since I was, like, a little kid. Yeah, I know. There there are toys that, like, you grow up with and you're like, wait a minute, is mm-hmm. this a boy toy or is it a girl toy? Like, I always remember getting a Happy Meal mm-hmm. and, like, nudging my mom, like, you got to say it's a boy Happy yeah. Meal because I don't want a girl toy. Yeah, which is, like, something that, as a kid, I always had, like, an inner conflict with because I feel like as kids you're supposed to, like... Like, um, soldiers or cars and stuff. But I really like plushies. I like stuffed animals. And that was, like, my thing. I was like, I want stuffed animals. Like, I like how soft they are. And, like, they're basically, like, toys. Their limbs move and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely had quite a bit of, like, stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And I had, like, the, like, army men. I like the little green guys and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, There's a scene where Andy's mom steps on one. Mm Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've stepped on my own green men. Really? But um, I'm not sure if they equal out to how painful versus mm-hmm. a Lego. Because I was not a Lego kid. No? No. Like, that was the one toy that I was like, eh. Yeah, you know, um, 
growing up, my brother was the Lego kid. Like, he was the one that always gets the Lego sets. And it wasn't until much older where, like, I got into Lego. But as a kid, like, Lego did not interest me. Nah, same. What I really liked was, um, I like to play with, like, building blocks, but, like, wooden ones. Okay. Almost like the like, Lincoln Logs. Like Lincoln Logs or, like, Jenga pieces. That's so cool. I was, like, use Jenga pieces to, like, build forts and stuff. That's cool. So that was, like, that was my thing. But um, after watching this movie as a kid, I was already afraid because of the commercial, right? So what this movie instilled more into me was I was afraid that my toys would feel mad or, like, sad if I didn't give each of them equal amount of playtime. Oh, my God. So as a kid, I you went through a fucking crisis. I did. Growing oh, up. I had an inner crisis as like a six year old every day of the week. Yeah. So I would always have to like go and tell all my toys good night. And like I would like my bed will be filled with all my stuffed animals because I couldn't pick which one to like leave behind. Oh and I'd be like sweltering in the summer heat because there's so many. But I was, like, so scared that one of them was going to turn on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You were afraid of the actual horror, what Toy Story could be. Yeah, I was afraid. I was, like, I tried so hard to be a nice boy to Dude. my kids. And, like, Child's Play even, like, reinforced that even more. Because I saw Child's Play as, like, a very young child. I feel like that's a thing. Yeah. Like, kids watch Child's Play mm-hmm. way too soon. Where, like, they they pretty much have, like, a ton of toys mm-hmm. in their, like, basement attic or in their room. I remember I watched Child's Play. Mm-hmm. Around the same time, I watched Toy Story. And we had a uh, mini-me from uh, Austin Powers doll uh-huh. in my uh, attic. And it was one of the first things you see when you make it up there. And I would not go up the attic after, after watching Child's mm-hmm. Play. Dude, my least favorite season was christmas because we would always go to the mall and we would have to we would like go in through sears and right when you exit sears there's a spencer's and they would always have, have a, chucky. a chucky doll oh and i was so scared of passing by i would like have to hide behind my dad and like he was like you have to face your fears it's not real and i'm like no <laughs> it's like <laughs> that I bitch is gonna get me yeah but yeah I was, like, very attached to, like, toys, even though I was scared of them. So, like, I was, like, also that kid that if we went to the movie theater, I would bring, like, one toy with me. Okay. And I was, like, this is my toy. I was, like, he's going to watch So, the you movie. were, like, Andy. I was. Know? I was, like, Andy. Yeah, I feel I like even now I still like having, like, toys at my disposal. <laughs> no, I definitely, I feel that. I like having, like, knickknacks and shit to play with. Mm-hmm. Whenever I take my, like one jacket out i have a harmonica in it yeah it's just yeah. like something like like a grab. fidget mm-hmm. but like a little different because you pull an action figure or a doll oh, yeah. when you're in your 20s everyone assumes that eh, maybe i should stay away from you yeah I, I i have like a so many like vivid memories of like certain instances happening where like i remember going to in and out one day after church and like pulling out like a digimon figure out of my pocket and, be, and my dad being like where the fuck did you bring that from? <laughs> like, I always have toys on me. <laughs> I, I always carry that bitch on me. Yeah, no matter the occasion, I have something to play with. That's sick. Yeah, so, like, I feel like that influenced me even now, where it's, like, I since I had so many, like, toys or stuff to, like, interact with, I never got too involved into, like, video games. Okay. Where that was my brother's whole thing. Like, he loved video games, but I would like to, like, actually have tactile mm. things to play with. Okay. So even now, it's like, I like playing video games, but my attention span does not, like, adhere to that. Or it's like, if I get a new Lego set, I'll dedicate, like, all day just building that. Okay. Yeah, I was, like, the reverse. I was more video games. Hmm. But I didn't start, like, you know, I'd say it was weird because I feel like there's a point in my, like, childhood that I blacked out. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what I liked because I didn't play video games for, like, a while. Yeah. Like, I didn't, like, actually, like, start getting into something for quite a little bit okay like i got into like pokemon cards but that was like i didn't play that i was like mm-hmm. collecting shit i think that was the thing i did if i like something i wanted more of it yeah like hoarding uh, yeah i was a hoarder <laughs> <laughs> every child's hoard first hoard is pokemon cards oh my god or Oh. yeah so like getting back to the movie <laughs> after i derail yeah 
Uh, here's one thing I want to bring up, right? So, this movie's pretty short. There's, like, a lot of things I do like about the movie. But I feel like talking about all the things I like, I feel like that's going to be pretty consistent with most people. Because it's, like, a very adored movie. But here's some of my gripes with this movie, right? Oh, shit. Uh, so, fuck all of Andy's friends. Because, like, why doesn't any one of them have a toy for Andy on his birthday? Yeah, so can we run through the list of what he gets? He gets I believe it's he gets bed sheets. Bed sheets, uh-huh. Which, a lunchbox. A lunchbox. Which when they get the bed sheets out, I my favorite quote is who invited that kid? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Mr. Potato Head. Fuck that kid. You get it. Fuck yeah. As much as none of them want mm-hmm. like a toy to disrupt their lives, they're like, we expect this. Yeah, like who doesn't give their friend a toy on their birthday? Yeah, so yeah, Andy's friends suck. Yeah. Especially like the bed sheet kids. It's like I think it's a lunchbox. It's like you could use it to like store stuff, but it's like come on guys. Yeah. And part of that is how awkward do you think that like encounter is between Andy's mom and Sid's mom? Or like <laughs> Andy's mom has to explain why Sid was not invited to the birthday party, even though he's a kid next door. Yeah. Um well, have you seen that kid? I feel like Andy's mom, even if like, even if Andy and Sid mm-hmm. like play together, I feel like Andy's mom would be like, that kid's not coming in my fucking house. But that's so... I, I am a single mother. <laughs> that's so awkward. It's I like... get, I guess it's awkward, but it's like, I don't know. He's like always I... playing outside. Yeah. But I kind of get that. Like, I, I remember having friends that my mm. mom was like. No. No. Not even for birthday parties? No. Oh, man. I would be so ashamed. I would not want to show my face around Sid. It's like, I don't want to explain why my mom didn't invite you to my birthday party. But I'm going to also assume that maybe Andy and Sid don't hang out together. No? No. Well, Andy plays with... Well, I guess Sid plays with his toys in a very drastically different way. Yeah. But I don't think that their vibes would coexist in the same room. Yeah, I guess you're right. Andy does seem like an elitist. All his friends look exactly the same. I know. It was just a bunch of Andys <laughs> running around. <laughs> There's like different shades of Andy. Yeah. They're actually moving to the clone facility because Andy needs more injections. <laughs> the have clone you, is failing. Have you heard of that theory? That like they're all like secret government clones? <laughs> what? Yeah. In Toy Story? Yeah, and that's why they all look the same. <laughs> that's awesome. I believe that now. There's so many wild theories about that. Oh my god, yeah. Here's like a theory, but I think it's confirmed true. Do you want another reason why Andy doesn't have a dad? He died? No. It's because animating adults was really hard, so they were like, fuck it, Andy's only getting a mom. Because uh-huh. they didn't want to deal with animating another human adult. Yeah, I feel like Andy's mom looks the best. Yeah? Yeah, of all the, like, humans. Mm. Sid's sister is okay. She's okay. I think they had an easier time animating, uh, like, girls than guys. Something about Andy, when he doesn't have his cowboy hat on, yeah. it gives me, like, weird... I was like, what are they doing? Like, yeah. he has no hair. Like, I get it. That's, like, a buzz cut look. But, like, I feel like it doesn't fit his uh, enormous dome. Yeah. What's well, because it's, like, it's hard animating hair. I guess. That's why Andy's mom, his her hair's in a ponytail. So they don't have to animate it. Yeah. And the sister has, like, a little bob cut. I guess so. But, I don't know. I feel like they just had an easier time with the girls and the guys. Yeah. I, I, I can see that. Um... I have another uh, question for you, which was actually brought up by someone else, but I totally agree. It's like, why do they risk soldiers' lives to see what toys Andy gets at the birthday party? So, yeah, I guess that is a pretty good question. But I think it's one of those, like, every toy kind of has, like, a personality. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Slink is, like, the faithful dog. Mm -hmm. Woody's like the sheriff you know so like they all kind of like fall into what they were kind of like modeled after so I feel like the soldiers 
aren't being told that they have to risk their lives, mm-hmm. I feel like it's almost like encoded in their DNA. No, like, but they are told because Woody says, hey, "I know if I send the the soldiers out." I know, but I think they're like willing to go. They're like they're like battlements, like they're just like on reserves, like they're ready for battle. But that's dark. It is a little dark. Like, like how many soldiers have they really lost throughout the years? I know. Ah oh, man, just like when that got brought up to me, I was like, "Yeah, that makes no sense." They're gonna know what toy it is. So like, what are they gonna do? Like plan to kill that toy yeah. in the time it takes. I guess so, but I think it's one of those like they couldn't wait. Okay. And I do love that scene. Yeah, when they send the soldiers out. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I forgot um, <laughs> that one of them gets stepped on. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I was like, I was like, I think that I think he dies. Mm-hmm. I think he dies here, but he doesn't. No, a different soldier dies. Yeah, later. <laughs> And, like, one of the things that I just noticed on this viewing of Toy Story was I never noticed that they bring up that they're moving next week. And, like, the whole time as a kid, I always thought that this was just, like, a weird plot point that they throw in in the third act. It's like, oh, I'm moving. I was like, where the fuck did this come from? But watching it now and noticing that they bring up that they're moving right at the beginning makes me question... Why did she let Andy decorate his room a week before moving? I'm not going to lie. When you pointed that out, I was like, damn. I was like, my mom wouldn't even let me do that, like, right before, like, spring. No. Because, like, we'd be cleaning the house. Yeah. She's like, fuck that. Don't put more shit up. He completely redecorates the entire room a week before moving. Who does that? Yeah. Like, it's not even just, like, he changes his, like, bed sheets and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's like he puts up, like, new posters. Oh, yeah. His drawings on the board, that's one thing yeah you know kids draw all the time bam put that bitch up but Mm -hmm. like yeah no i agree i was like damn andy's mom is just like whatever make more work for yourself later i guess but like enough with my bitching about like some of the gripes i have i do want to talk about like the things i do like about this movie because toy story at least the first one is one of like the few toy story movies that i do enjoy yes i think i enjoy it so much because it is such a short movie and it doesn't like, um, I don't know, I, I feel like it doesn't try to like force a moral message down your throat like most Pixar movies do. Yeah, I I can see that. Because like, yeah, I think, yeah, cause we went over like the theme of this is definitely mm-hmm. like fear of change and the yeah. fear of all this shit. But like, it's not like constant. Mm-hmm. It's more just kind of like, that's the driving force for Woody. Yeah. And boom. I want to um, talk to you about like when you get first get introduced to Buzz. Like, how cool is that shot, right? Where Woody is, like, slowly climbing the blankets and he sees Buzz just towering there. Yeah. I I remember thinking, like, as a kid, mm-hmm. I expected Buzz Lightyear to be way taller than Woody. Mm-hmm. But I kind of like that, like, he's not. No, he's shorter. Yeah, he's shorter. But he gives off this, like, of course, like, this, like, pristine appearance. He's yeah. a new toy. He has all these gadgets and shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh... I don't know. I like the introduction of Buzz a lot. Yeah. I like his little, like, come in, Star Command. Like, like I quoted that as a kid. Oh, really? Like, come in, Star Command with my <laughs> friends. Like, we playing and shit. You know what I liked about um, Buzz getting introduced? I like whenever we go into his perspective and we see, like, the glare in his helmet and stuff. And, like, that the reflection. Is, that is a sick detail that, yeah. like, it's not, like, too old of a movie Mm-mm. in 95. But still, the fact that, like these animated movies they put in details like that is like insane oh yeah because there's like movies where like people don't put in details at all mm-hmm. and then when you go back and rewatch them there's no like oh i didn't notice that before and shit yeah. like and there's a ton of that in this movie yeah there's a um there's a few scenes like later on where i really enjoy like how subtle things are like i really like all the texture on mr potato head yeah like all those bumps on him and stuff I like um, what another thing I just noticed is when Ham and Mr. Potato Head are playing Battleship and Mr. Potato Head's losing, but you see that his side of the board is all like white. It's all white. So Ham is just cheating, cheating the whole yep. time. And I just noticed this. <laughs> I was like, how does Mr. Potato Head not know that he's cheating? I like when Mr. Potato Head rearranges his face and goes, I'm Picasso. Yeah. And I was like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> the young cultured swine yeah and it's like 
funny enough, that line, you uncloze your spine, I quote in like my Discord group all the time. Oh, really? And I forgot what movie it came from. Yeah, it's one of, I also quote that a lot. I used to quote that with one of my old friends. And it's one of those quotes where it's like, I think it's in like such like the public consciousness that you don't remember where it's from. Yeah. And I was like, damn, it comes from fucking Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Which is like insane. I, I do like, we get to hear a lot about Zerg at the yeah because like i i was thinking i was like damn like zerg kind of might come out of nowhere in toy story 2 Mm -hmm. actually no they like give buzz like a backstory i think they knew yeah that they were gonna make something out of this yeah there's a lot of world building in this movie um another thing that they bring up is like alice toy barn yeah alice toy barn they bring right back Mm -hmm. um that yeah i think later on when we do the trivia Uh I, i have easter eggs Oh, I don't have any Easter eggs, so I was a I was big into the Pixar uh, Easter egg thing, so I okay. won't go I won't go too overboard, but I'll pull out a couple. But I think they do a lot of like very fun things that like mm-hmm. if you watch like not even just in the series, but you watch a bunch of Pixar movies, mm-hmm. there's a lot of tie-ins everywhere. You know, I was looking for something where I, I guess since this is the first Pixar movie, they wouldn't include it. But you know how in um, other Pixar movies, whenever they make it they always include something for their new project in it yeah i didn't see anything in this one but i also wasn't looking too hard for it yeah possibly this was one of their like they didn't think ahead like yeah like they may have not had another project lined up like they had yeah. to wait and see like i understand they had a lot of money dumped into this yeah but i think they had to wait for their return before they could start working on anything big yeah but i do like the gas station dynaco yeah dynaco and something uh that's in cars mm-hmm. um also the dinosaur kind of reminds me of a good dinosaur or whatever that yeah. movie is yeah so, i can see that stuff like that so i feel like they they do a good job of like that world building mm-hmm. you know a sense of like that's toy story you know pizza planet pizza planet yeah that's an iconic one. Oh my god so um we just talked about the buzz Lightyear first introduction scene right what is your like favorite snippet of this movie where if you know toy story is getting put on you're like i'm waiting for that scene there's there's a couple um god one i just like a lot is when they're in the pizza planet and they go into the claw machine yeah and we meet the green little alien Mm -hmm. and they are so iconic their voice their quotes everything Mm -hmm. they go ooh, like ah "Ah." (laughs) And, and they're just like, take me to your master. And he goes, the claw. <laughs> and it's like, that is such a memorable thing. Yeah. I, I love how Woody's like, let go of me, you zealots. It's <laughs> 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 just like all culty. <laughs> I know. They, they kind of are like a cult. Yeah. But um, yeah, I like that. And then like when the one gets picked up, he goes, I have been chosen <laughs> to the other side. Goodbye, brothers. Man, that reminds me of... There's another movie where it's, like, very similar. Oh, a uh, Sausage Party. Yeah. That's, like, what that reminded me of. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I've been chosen. I've been chosen. And then they realize it's for murder. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I like The Claw in Pizza Planet. Um, I quoted it right before it happened, but when Buzz and Woody are fighting, it's one of my favorite things ever, is when Woody's slamming Buzz on the floor, and you hear, Buzz, 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 Buzz. Lightyear. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> I do not know why, <laughs> but I love that part so much. That's in um, that's at the gas station, right? Yeah, it's at Dynaco. Yeah, I was gonna say like that's one of those scenes where like I look forward to a lot is when they are fighting at the like um at the gas station because I love the whole like Woody just going off on Buzz. He's yeah. just like over Buzz's shit and. <laughs> Buzz just looks at Woody. He's like, you're a sad, strange little Little man. man. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. Um, A weird thing I like. I Mm -hmm. like the way Woody runs. Oh, like all ragdolly? Yeah, because he has like stuffing. Mm -hmm. And then I like how like Buzz is like very like action. And it's like he's stiff. And I like that. That's a fun detail. Yeah. And then Mr. Potato Head. The way he walks is really funny because like mm-hmm. uh, he doesn't have like mo like mo like like very flexible pieces. Mm-hmm. But I do like when he bends his arms, how they look like they're popping out of his like oh yeah head a lot. I was like, that's cool. 
You know what this movie, I just realized, is like, Mr. Potato Head, I think, wants to take over. Oh, he wants to be number one. He's so fast at, like, fuck Woody. He's a murderer. We gotta lynch this guy. Yeah. Yeah, because, God, I I do enjoy that scene where they Mm -hmm. turn on Woody. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I like a good angry mob, but, like, it's a good scene. They turn into an angry mob really fast. It's like they were waiting for it. Yeah. Because, like, they all know Woody is, like, anti-Buzz. And... Everyone's, like, (laughs) pro-Buzz. Mm-hmm. You know what I I wanted to ask was, like, when... In that scene, when Woody is asking the Magic 8-Ball, does the Magic 8-Ball, since it is a toy, does it have sentience? Oh, shit. Because he throws that behind the, like, table. Yeah. Does it have sentience? I wonder. Hmm. I'd say sure, and also no, no. at the same time, because like you know, don't count on it. You know, that's like an actual part of like the eight ball and shit. Yeah, because like this movie brings up a lot of questions more than I think it intended to. Because in Toy Story four, we learn that as long as like someone plays with something and gives it like a life, voice, it, almost oh, it turns into like a sentient being. Yeah, and we get that with Forky. So I'm like, what else in the Toy Story universe has sentience? <laughs> that's a that that's a scary road to go down. Yeah, because it's like, have you ever like just like played with something like mm-hmm. randomly? They're like, no, yeah. I'm like, now it's like now that's a, alive. Yeah, it's like your god. <laughs> and um, like I like how most of the toys in Andy's room know where they come from. Yeah, they're like Mattel and shit like that. Yeah. And I do like Rex where he's like, no, I'm not actually part of this brand. I was like bought in like a subsidiary. Yeah. Like, and it's like, bro. Well, well, like one of the things that I, to this day, I still don't understand is how Buzz does not realize that he's a toy. Yeah, it is weird because when we meet other Buzz Lightyears in two, they're all like that. Yeah. It's kind of like, I don't want to make uh people mad it's kind of like the army (laughs) you know like you're trained for something you know like buzz light years are trained to do this Mm -hmm. like and and i feel like everywhere else it's like when you're created and if sentience is given to you before you make it to a kid yeah you know you're a toy so maybe all the buzz light years are kind of like no i'm stuck in hyper sleep or something i don't know because they're not like computers so they're not programmed but i mm -hmm. feel like maybe it's one of those like there's probably like some kind of leader at the Buzz Lightyear factory yeah. telling them all like this is what you have to do. I'm almost ignore cu- these things. I'm also curious if toys don't wake up until like you play with them, because it's not until he gets out of the box that he kind of like blinks into existence and then he's like, "Where am I?" Yeah, it, yeah, I can see that. Um, kind of weird though because. Well, I guess because this is going on to Toy Story 2, I guess a lot of the toys that we do see at Alice Toy Barn moving are like the demo toys. Yeah. We don't really see a lot of like the toys that's just like in packages, like chilling. Like, yeah, because I think the other buzz that we meet. He's only like gets the display act- model. He like sees that buzz outside the box. And yeah. He's like, the fuck? Yeah. Because none of the other buzzes are moving. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, maybe you don't start to gain sentience until you. Yeah. Well, one of the other things it's like. If Buzz is so convinced he's a space ranger, why does he still act like a toy when Andy shows up? Programming? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your plastic DNA. It's just like something that all toys have, like yeah. a self-preservation thing. Maybe. I don't. I don't know. That's like the one thing I can't get behind Toy Story, is I don't like that. That's introduced that all the toys immediately play dead. Yeah. But. Buzz also does it. Because if you hear Woody at the end where he's talking to all his Sid's toys, he goes, we got to break a couple rules. Yeah. So maybe it's like these are like the, the Ten Commandments toys have to live by or they go to hell. See, I, I agree <laughs> with that, but Buzz doesn't know he's a toy. Maybe they tell him off screen. But <laughs> but think about it as an adult. It is a really funny thing to talk about. Yeah. It's like, it's like, when does Buzz know 
he can't be moving around. Yeah. Because, like, you know the first time Andy comes in the room after he's into existence, he's like, hello. Yeah. Uh, giant leader. <laughs> yeah, he would say something, right? Oh, my God, yeah. He'd blow their fucking cover. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe it's just one of those things that, like, when you're Andy's around, yeah, you, you shut off. Yeah. So, did I ever bring this up earlier? Uh, my hot take on Sid? No. So... I wanted to ask you about Sid. He's like the secondary villain, right? Is Sid really a villain or is he just a misunderstood creative kid? In the toys eyes, he's a, he's a scary monster. Yeah. And in the rest of the general populace, I believe he's just a destructive kid. Cuz I, I knew kids that just destroyed shit but for is, fun. But that doesn't make him a bad kid, does it? Yeah, um, I get. I don't know. He is like a menace. So, but like, <laughs> but to toys. Yeah. Well, he's like using fireworks and shit when he should have. But that's the thing. It's like Sid doesn't know toys have feelings. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm not saying he's like a villain because of like toys. Yeah. I think it's more like the actions he does make him kind of like. I guess not villain. I guess you're right. Not really villain. Like, what if I tell you? Like, what if? The only reason he's acting out is because he doesn't get enough attention at home. Well, then I just feel a little bad. I feel bad for Sid. Yeah. Rewatching this movie, I was like, if we see his, like, I don't know if it's his dad, stepfather, something. Just sleeping in the recliner. Yeah, and he has, like, soda cans around him, which is supposed to be beer. <gasps> in my G movie? <laughs> I don't think so. And I'm like, is Sid, like, an abused kid? He might be. Like, he gives off, like... Why does a kid have that many fucking locks on his door? Maybe to keep his parents out. Maybe. And he also has a military manual. So I'm like, maybe he's like a military brat. Maybe. So maybe he's just like, lives, like, no one pays too much attention to him. So he does all these things. So maybe hopefully one of his parents will, like, react. Yeah, I could see that. Damn, thinking about it, it's like, I knew a Sid growing Mm -hmm. up. And that was the vibe. Yeah. And, like, knowing that makes me feel even more worse. Because I'm like, that reinforces that Woody is the villain. Because he just traumatized this poor kid. Yeah. But I guess you do what you got to do to survive, right? <laughs> Which, do toys die? And then they just get the... And then, like, the kids don't know that they died, so yeah. they just, like, play with, like, the alive toys and the dead toys together. But in that scene where they terrified Sid, we see all his previous toys that got blown up or got destroyed. I feel come like... out of the mud and yeah. out of the sand, so they're not dead. I feel like you only die when you're, like, completely destroyed. I feel like <clears throat> if there's parts of you, uh-huh. you're okay. Because, okay. like, cause, like, Buzz's arm gets detached, but the arm's not crawling around. Yeah. But we see like half destroyed toys they even rips like a head off of a doll that Mm -hmm. they fix and the doll's alive again so i feel like the the toy soul (laughs) will just kind of like (laughs) attach itself to like anything that it like permeated to yeah that works because in toy story 3 mr potato head puts his face on tortilla yeah so i feel like it's it's more it's more magic than we realize yeah because i was like when I, when I saw, like, all the toys come out of the mud, like, as zombies, I'm like, toys, do they die? I guess they don't die unless they are completely destroyed. Yeah. Or, like, their soul hmm. is gone. Which, I don't like this conversation, because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, fuck. It's like, this brings up so many, like, existential things, which I feel like Toy Story is trying to talk about, like the existential crisis that all these toys have because we, buzz goes through such a big crisis he does because he's like i'm not a toy i'm a spaceman i'm trying to get to the planet whatever to fight zerg mm-hmm. and then he sees the commercial yeah oh my god yeah when he sees that commercial that's one of the most heartbreaking things about this movie most pixar movies bring a tear to my this movie didn't make me feel sad i i felt bad for him at that point yeah because it's like, you know, there's always like the white lie thing, mm-hmm. like like Santa, yeah. you know, like, and then when like kids realize it's not real, it's like, yeah, they get, you know, you, you don't cry, but like mm-hmm. you get bummed out for them. 
and that was like the feeling for buzz it's like oh he, he found out yeah because what he's the only one actively trying to to be hit like a shitty person to him yeah be like you're not a toy no you're a toy you're not a spaceman and everyone else is just like buzz you're pretty cool yeah see it's like when he finds out he's a toy there's like that glimmer of like denial right where he's like no fuck that i i know what i am and he goes on top of the railing and he like takes out his wings as he's like he knows he's a space ranger. He could fly. He's not. He, there's a little bit of doubt, but when he looks at that window and like that longingness of like, I can do this. I could fly. And then you have Randy Newman's song in the background being like, like a bird in the sky. I believe I can fly. Why'd I fly? And then he like goes and for like split second you're like, can Buzz do this? He falls. And he, like, hits the ground, and you hear him hit the ground. Arm falls off. He sees his arm fall off, so it, like, proves he's a toy. And it probably doesn't, like, hurt. Yeah. And, like, that, like when he sees that arm, he looks back, and he's just, like... And he closes his eyes. And then in the song, he's, like, clearly I will go sailing no more. And it's just, like, because it's, like, it has such a, like, a positive note right before he, like, launches. And then when... He lands and the song matches that feeling. That's like that's the one thing I do appreciate about this movie is like how good the score of this movie matches up with the scenes. Yeah, it it is so good. Randy Newman knocks it out of the park. Oh yeah, it's like Phil Collins on the Tarzan soundtrack. Mm-hmm. It's just iconic. People like quote just part of the song. Yeah, you know, like it's. It's fucking good. Yeah, because um, this was like that was a compromise they um they did because they really wanted Toy Story to be a musical because most Disney movies aren't musicals at that point, and they were like, no, they don't want to do it because it, they didn't feel like it was gonna fit the movie. It would have came out of nowhere, really. Yeah, I think if Toy Story was a musical, it'd be very different for me. Yeah, uh, and he's like, but the compromise was like get music to fit like the emotions of what's happening and i don't think pixar had a musical up until coco coco was like the first musical where like characters actually sing okay but yeah like and that existential crisis of buzz and like next time we see buzz is when um he snapped he snapped right (laughs) he loses it he's miss nesbitt which is like the not another part of the movie that's like my other favorite scene. Is oh when yeah, he's like drinking tea, and he's like wasted. <laughs> well, that's where I was like, is he wasted, or is he just um, crazy? Yeah, I think he's crazy, but he looks wasted. Yeah, I, one of my favorite lines is when he's like, "One minute you're defending the galaxy, and suddenly you see yourself <laughs> drinking Darjeeling with Miss." Marie Antoinette and her little sister and they're and they, both decapitated. And they wave. <laughs> Which I think is funny that they that they're decapitated because what he just named, they really do get yeah. decapitated. Yeah, Marie like, Antoinette. Which I feel like is another thing where it's like mm-hmm. if you're an adult, you'll pick up on. Yeah. And I think it's just funny that like the toys are still alive at that point. Mm-hmm. Which you now know it's like well, even without their head, they're still yeah. there. They're still sentient. Yeah. Which we see with a lot of uh Sid's toys, his yeah. creations, chimeras even, if you mm-hmm. want to go that far. Yeah. Which, until this recent viewing, I was like, I hate Sid's toys. But one of the people that we were watching the movie with was just like, no, because like they're harmless. Yeah. They just look weird. And I was like, damn, I feel bad. Because I just, judged them. I judge them. I judge them for how they look, not for how they really are. Yeah. And this movie has a lot of uh, movie references. And I was reading that that's a movie reference to, like, 1930s Freaks. Oh, know. shit. Yeah. It's, like, a really old movie. I was like, oh, fuck. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, i never seen that movie. And, like, uh, Sid's Carpet, right? Yeah, the, from The Shining. Mm-hmm. Um, Toy Story 2 has a lot of movie references. Yeah. But we'll get there next week, Nick. <laughs> so, um, do you have any other, like, scenes that really stand out to you? Um, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I like, so like Andy's room is also his little sister's room. 
Is it? I couldn't tell. Because the crib's there. Okay. Because like when he's playing in the beginning, Mishpatah head goes in jail. And, like he's it's uh-huh. right there, and the crib's right there. Okay, cool. So and then in two, they have separate rooms and uh-huh. stuff. But that's how Bo Peep is there in Andy's mm-hmm. room because she's actually like a lamp. Yeah. Well, she's connected to a lamp mm-hmm. her sheep. And so I think that's like funny because like you think about like Andy has a lot of like gender neutral and boy toys. Then Bo Peep comes out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And like that's obviously not a boy toy. Yeah. Like by 1995 standards. Mm-hmm. And then like you see her, she's up on like a little lamp. And I thought that was a cool little detail. It's like how Andy has this in his room. Yeah. You know, <laughs> speaking of Bo Peep, I didn't realize like how horny Bo Peep and Woody are. Oh, they they want to fuck so bad. Yeah. He, she's like, I'm just a couple of blocks away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which, like, like, she's literally, like, with a couple building blocks between yeah. them, which is pretty funny. Mr. Potato Head's also really horny. He uh, really wants Mrs. Potato Head. Yeah, he's like, Miss Potato Head. Miss Potato Head. He goes, what? A guy can dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Disney needs to stop trying to update old movies. Yeah. This movie does not look bad. Mm-hmm. But the parts that they try to like update for twenty twenty two make it look weird. Miss Miss Bo Peep, man, she is very ugly shiny. Yeah. Like when she's farther away from the camera or in the dark, yeah. she's great. But when she was up close, she blinked wrong. Like yeah. like when I blinked before the other, she's like reflecting too much. Yeah. Her smile is weird. Her smile is weird. And I feel like that was not a thing in the original. Yeah, I feel like her smile reminded me of, like, a robot chicken. <laughs> oh, my God. I could see that. So, I found out um, during some research about the blinking thing, right? Because we noticed that that happens to a couple other toys. And that was deliberate. Oh. To make all the toys blink at one eye after the other. I never, I did not notice it to any toy but her. It's, well, when Buzz comes into existence, yeah. he kind of blinks weird. But after that, I never noticed yeah, it. Yeah, it's every single toy. And huh. it's to, like, remind the audience, like, you subconsciously know something's off, to remind you that they're toys and they're not people. That this is Uncanny Valley. Yeah. So, it's, like, it was a very deliberate, intentional thing to make the eyes, like, blink. Okay. hmm So, I also want to bring up, do you have any, like, connection to the movie Small Soldiers? No, I, I, that's actually one of the movies I never saw because I was so scared of toys. And you've never seen it? Nope. I saw a commercial for it, I think on Cartoon Network or something, and it looks scary. We should do a bonus <laughs> episode of that after Toy Story because someone brought up what if Toy Story was done live action? Uh-huh. And my thing would be, would you make the toys live action with the p- human people too? Would you make both of them live action? Yeah. Or would you take the small soldiers approach where you just have real people with toys you know what i'm saying because yeah. like small soldiers they're like animated toys in a real world while toy story everything's animated gotcha so it's like if so if they did toy story live action which way would you want it would you make it so that the toys were animated in a real world or everything was live action well <laughs> wouldn't the toys still be animated if everything was live action well, like no, they were played by like real people, like the, like kind of like oh. kind of like Indian in the cupboard situation, where like the Indian, like when um, he comes back out, he's like a person, just really small. I've never seen that, but my first thought was, oh, like cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is cats. <laughs> it's just like very weird looking people playing. <laughs> like, to- <laughs> we have Taylor Swift. <laughs> I would want the animated in real life because I feel like if there were actual people, it would be like a really weird SNL skit. It would be. Or I guess it would be like Night at the Living Museum. Yeah. See, I would like to see their concept for Mm. if it was all done with like people Mm. just to see how it look. Because Mm. like I said, it wouldn't have the Pixar feel anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And this is my call to Disney. Don't do it. Don't you fucking do it. Don't, no live action. Don't do story. it. Don't even do the small soldiers route because you will <laughs> ruin the, the, the Pixar feel. Yeah. Because you will not be able to make all of them look drastically different from each other. Yeah. Like how Rex has that piece of his head like mm-hmm. connected to his body, that line and shit like that. Like Miss Potato Head looking so different. Mm. 
Ham, obviously, is a piggy bank, not a yeah. toy. You know what I like about this Toy Story? Because I haven't rewatched Toy Story 1 in years. But um, rewatching this after the most recent one I saw, which was Toy Story 4, I like how toy like they look. Yes. Because in the other movies, especially Toy Story 4, they're very animated. It feels very cartoony. But in this one, they feel like actual toys and you can see like their seams and stuff mm-hmm. i think toy story 3 is the lat is like a hybrid between two animated and toy like i feel like mm-hmm. the first two movies they all everything feels like toys yeah but but i guess like three and four when we give in our watch i'll keep a lookout for mm-hmm. if they keep the running the same mm-hmm. and the movements okay. i feel like their faces could be as animated. It won't take me out of it. Mm-hmm. But their movements, if they keep them feeling like they're actual toys, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Before we like wrap up this, right? I do want to get to two more topics. I wanted to ask, what is your favorite toy other than the main two, which is like Woody and Buzz? Which of the other toys is like, I, I like that guy. I could party with him. I, just like I said, I'm a slink, man. Slink? But if I could pick another one randomly, I think I'd, I'd pick RC. RC's cool. RC is a vibe. Because also, but like RC, he's like, he's not like a narc, mm-hmm. but he's like, he's a good guy. Because like, he's letting everyone know, Woody fucking killed Buzz. Yeah. Because that's how, because also, I want to talk about that really quick. Uh-huh. Woody uses another toy to kill do this yeah like like he treats rc more like a vehicle than yeah. a toy and it's really scary because like at the because like we see rc running around and stuff but when everything's getting packed up and mm-hmm. buzz is looking down out the window for a toy and he uses rc like he like basically like subjects him to do this yeah which is like i don't know that's scary to me like what else is woody capable of yeah like because like <laughs> RC doesn't want to do this, but because he has a remote control, he has to, like, do what the remote yeah. control says. And then later on, when Woody and Buzz are trying to get back in the car, in the moving truck, he, like, rips open the box of Andy's toys and he goes, oh, it's not in here. And he pushes everyone away, yeah. which is just, like, fuck all you people. And yeah. then he finds RC. And he's not like, RC, will you help me? Mm-mm. Like, he's like... I'm taking you, Kai, your remote control, and I can make you do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like you fucking slut, do what I want. Yeah, he basically like <laughs> he he looks at him as an object yeah. instead of an equal. <laughs> Woody's a fucking menace. Yeah. The more I think about it, Woody does a lot of things that I'm like, bro. Yeah. Chill out. You are a child's plaything. Speaking of like that, right? This movie did a lot of things that made me cringe. Not because it's like, ah, this is so cringeworthy, but it's like, I hate it because I'm like, I would hate to be Andy in this situation where it's like, I hate when Buzz rips off his sticker because I'm like, you ruined yourself. Yeah, I know <laughs> you you're not mint anymore. You can't find that sticker at the store. Yeah. I hate that. I hate when Woody gets like a burn mark in his forehead. Yeah, it so, goes away from movie to movie though. Yeah, but they don't explain it. Yeah. So I hate that. And I hate at the end when rc is like getting um ricocheted off with like the rocket i hate that his remote gets left behind it gets crushed yeah because i'm like how is andy gonna play with rc he's rc's in the trash now you've condemned this toy to death (laughs) also can we talk about how andy's mom gaslights andy (laughs) about where his toys are (laughs) she gaslights him a lot yeah he's just like He's like, Mom, I can't find Buzz or Woody anywhere. He goes, well, mm-hmm. where's the last place you had him? And he's like, right here. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're not looking hard enough. And I was like, which is such a mom move. Yeah. But if it was current day and age, it'd be like, it's because you're on that damn phone all the time. Oh, yeah. I love how at the end, they just appear in that box. And she, he's like, yeah. oh, they're right here. <laughs> and they don't appear. They fall from the fucking sky. Yeah. Which if Andy was looking that direction, he'd be like. What just happened? God. God. <laughs> kind of like the scene from uh, <laughs> fucking Animal House. Yeah. But I like how the mom's just like, see, I told you you would find them. <laughs> <laughs> Where were they? Right here in the car the whole time. Oh, that's great, honey. Yeah. Meanwhile, like Andy's mom noticed him fall from the sky. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we try to get away from this. <laughs> <laughs> no more toys, Andy. You're banned. You know, 
where my favorite toy is, and this is gonna be like such a curveball, but I really relate to this toy on an emotional level. Can you take a guess what it is? On an emotional level. Yeah. Hmm. Is it Rex? No. Oh. Rex is my second choice. I really like the squeaky shark. <laughs> when, he, when he's like where's my hat he's like hey i'm woody howdy 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 <laughs> I was like, that's my favorite song. If you, he's in the background a few times yeah but like the first time he talks it's just like hi i'm woody howdy 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 that's sick i love that shark i so forgot much. about him even when we rewatched it this time i was uh, like damn i forgot about that shark that's my favorite toy and that's like also one of my favorite toys as a kid. I remember like that. Oh being yeah, like the funniest thing. I like the binoculars. The as, binoculars are cool. As like a side character, mm-hmm. I like them. And his name is Lenny. Yeah, I don't like that he talks. I forgot he talks, and he yeah. has such a funny voice. Yeah. Because like I'm not saying he has like a Brooklyn voice or whatever, but he has like a very like I don't know like racially charged voice. I was like, what ethnicity is this toy? <laughs> It's just a fucking pair of binoculars. He's weird. Also, that's another toy that I think is strange, like kind of like RC. Because here it has its own eyes and it yeah. can see, but people can use it to view what it's viewing. Yeah. And that's also like a scary thought. <laughs> Same with the, the speaking spell. Yeah, which is, I did not notice it emotes. Yeah. When like when when everyone's like, what's going on with that new toy? Mm-hmm. Question marks are pouring across yeah. its face. When um, it's announced at the end of the movie that Molly got a Mrs. Potato Head, it goes hubba hubba in the <laughs> background. Um, shit like that. I love it. Um, um, what's what's the dog's name? Buster. That's not Buster. I think it is. No, I think it's like Skunk or Scud. No, oh, 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 my bad. I thought it was Andy's dog. No, no. Oh, S- Scud. Scud. I love Scud. <laughs> Scud has like, like I, th- I don't know if it's a play on Spud McKenzie. Because it, it kind of looks like that dog. Yeah. I was going to say, it's definitely Spud McKenzie's, like, derpy animated brother. I love how Scud has, like, it almost looks like when you have really thick glasses and your eyes are, like, <laughs> super cute. Oh, um, fuck. And I hate how Woody and Buzz try to murder this dog by yeah. making him run into traffic. Yeah. <laughs> like, not the best... <laughs> angle for them funny enough like thinking back on it i was like toy story 2 is the only time that they play in traffic and i was like wait a minute and then after watching this Uh one i was like they play in traffic like three times yeah they like fight at the gas station they're in the rc car and like and i was like holy shit like this is insane yeah they're in like very dangerous situations a lot that's almost where like i feel like the set pieces move really quickly for me as a kid just being like that didn't happen or no. I just completely forgot. Um, is there... What was I going to say? Is there a certain quote that you think is like, this is a, this is Toy Story. If you quote it, everyone's going to get it. Oh, God. There's a lot. Um, I do like You Are a Child's Play thing. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Um, I feel like if you quote anything from like what the toys say, like their mm-hmm. buttons will do... Like, you know, like, come in Star Command or, like, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue, to mm-hmm. infinity and beyond. So, like, if you quote anything that the toys say, mm-hmm. like, there's a snake in my boot. Yeah. No one's going to go, hmm, what's that from? I yeah. feel like you've seen Toy Story once and you immediately know that. Yeah. I like it when uh, Buzz is first introduced and, like, Woody is like, all right, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, we're all impressed by Andy's new toy. And Buzz is like, toy? toy and Woody's just like t-o-y toy <laughs> i like when buzz says oh you're you're uh i don't know what he calls andy mm-hmm. he's like your warlord or your master has uh-huh. indoctrinated me into the tribe yeah because he writes andy on his foot <laughs> and that kid i don't know if that's that must be his signature backwards end yeah because he puts it everywhere not on buzz I think it's on Buzz too. No, it's uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Mm-mm. I'm pretty sure. Bring oh. it up. Bring it up. All right. I I am one hundred percent sure. That's not from Toy Story one though. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> look at Toy Story one. Look, I will believe you when I see it. Okay, let's see. 
You're like, oh, I can't find the one picture I'm looking for. It's such an obscure uh, one. Google Images is failing me. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to have to take your word for it. I, I really thought. No, no. It's it's spelled it, right. Okay. Well, then I don't know when Andy writes on Woody's foot versus it's, when like he does it to Buzz. You know, it's the progression. This is how we know. That, that he's not a child anymore. Yeah, he knows how to spell correctly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> There's also a theory that's like, since um, Woody has been in the family for years, maybe that's like his dad's signature. Maybe Andy's a junior. No, no I don't, <laughs> I don't think either. so. Because I, I think it's. See, I think it's funny that he writes Andy on his toys. I guess he does bring them everywhere, so he does have to, like, let everyone know. You know, uh, actually, I, I used to do that as a kid. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, my cousin would get similar toys as me. Oh, see, that makes sense. Yeah. I used to do that with game controllers. Write your name on the game controller. Yeah, I used to put my initials on the back, because, like, back when all my friends played GameCube, uh-huh. we all had the same purple controller. So, I didn't want to leave my controller behind, because that was my controller. <laughs> Because I had that happen with an N64 controller growing up Uh. where we had same ones. But my friends, his R button would stick on occasion Mm -hmm. and mine didn't. And one time he handed me a controller that I thought was mine to go back home. And it was the R button was sticking. And he was like, oh, it happens to all of them. And I think he gaslit me because he just took the better. Oh, he definitely gaslit you. Yeah. So it's okay. You know. um... Fuck you, Ned. (laughs) So, Buzz has probably one of the best lines, which is to infinity and beyond. It's so cool. Iconic. There's, there's people who get tattoos oh, yeah. of that, you know? Like, that's like a like a group tattoo almost. Mm-hmm. Well, not group, but couple tattoo. Do you think Woody got fucked with the catchphrases? N- no. Not you think, really. You think there's a snake in my boot? It's that's, just as iconic. No, it's someone poisoned the water hole. <laughs> <laughs> I get that tattooed on me. <laughs> I'd be like, you're fucking stupid. I I don't know. Like, I wish they gave Woody a line that was just as cool as to Infinity and Beyond. See, that yeah, it would be cool. But when we watch Toy Story two. Mm-hmm. I know why they didn't, because it had to correlate with the show, if you think about it. I feel like it's all quotes from the show. You don't think so, there was a cool quote in the show? The snake in my boot. I don't, Someone poison the water. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's why, you know. Okay. This is me. I, yeah, I think maybe he should have gotten like a a better quote, but I think, I think what he got fit the bill. Okay. Well... That we, I think we went over uh, Toy Story well enough. I think so. I so think. Let's, I think... let's take a break, and then when we come back, we get hit up all that trivia and all your Easter eggs. Hell yeah. Hi, and welcome back to the s- trivia section of the show. All right, Nick, so give me your Easter eggs. Okay. So. One Easter egg that appears, well, it starts in Toy Story and appears in other Toy Story movies and later on in like mm-hmm. the other Pixar movies is Andy's mom's license plate number, A113. Mm-hmm. I don't know the significance of this, but it pops up a ton. It's in Wally, it's in the other Toy Story movies. Mm-hmm. I believe it's mentioned in Cars, even, mm-hmm. just like how Dinoco is in Cars. Yeah. We talk about a lot of the world building. But there is another one. I, I I kept it quiet while we were watching it because I wanted to save it for the podcast. Did you notice what the toolbox brand was? I did. Oh, okay, so like you saw his Binford tools, mm-hmm. which is so Tim Allen plays the voice of Woody mm-hmm. and is on this show Home Improvement, which they have a show Tool Time which is sponsored by the fictional company Binford Tools. Okay. And then that's... So, Toy Story takes place within the world <laughs> of a home improvement. <laughs> okay, so, I saw the the tools, right? I didn't realize what it was from. Mm. So, 
I didn't know it was like a fictional thing in that show. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. I do have an answer for your A113 though. So the significance of that is that is a um, classroom number at Cal Arts. Mm. Where all like the people who went to where Cal they Arts, all went. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, because like I think like uh, the director uh, went there at the same time as like Brad Bird and Tim Burton. And, like so, if you watch a lot of other animated movies or uh, movies where of alum of Cal Arts, you'll see a one one three in a lot of movies and stuff. Gotcha. Um, with Mr. Potato Head's mm-hmm. voice actor Don Rickles. Mm-hmm. Did you know what his most common insult was when he when he was a comedian? What you looking at, hockey puck? Yeah, yeah. and then he says it in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Where what you looking at, hockey puck? Yeah, and it literally is just a fucking hockey puck being like, bitch. Yeah, which I think is really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know the two Disney references? I saw the the Mickey Mouse watch. Yeah, Mickey Mouse watch. Uh, I, hmm, I, I don't know. The other one was towards the end of the movie. I'm not sure if these are the only two Disney, uh-huh. but these are the two that I know about. I know Buzz has like Disney printed on his butt. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what you're thinking. No, Akuna Matata is played oh, as yeah, a yeah, car yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. when um, Molly notices the toys. That actually caught me off guard this time. Yeah? Yeah, I don't remember it like, playing. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I always like that little Akuna Matata part you know i was thrown off because i was looking at the cast of toy story and timon was on there oh yeah (laughs) so i was like where the fuck did timon come from um i this is just on like like point out i do like in the beginning of the movie how andy spells everything Mm -hmm. like um what is a gen grill store yeah whatever and school spelled with a k and shit like that which like still makes me believe that andy is stupid I that's one of those things that I get it. It's like a movie and show trope. It's like, how do we show that these these are kids? Let's make them spell everything wrong. I've never spelled one in backwards letter. Never. Like never. as a joke, but never like this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, never in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on, there's one more. Um, I did find that there's a book behind Andy. That relates to what you talked about earlier in the podcast. Uh-huh. Um, the Tin Toy. Uh huh. There's a book that has that written on it. Okay. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty cool. Nice little fun callback. You know, while watching the movie, they lingered on that a lot. And I was trying to look if I saw anything. Yeah. But I didn't pick that up. Gotcha. And then, of course, we have all the toy brands that are in real life. Mm-hmm. We have like the Little Tykes, we have mm-hmm. Play School. They mentioned Mattel mattel so i think that's pretty cool Mm -hmm. and um i was actually talking to someone i was in college Uh about like can you name drop companies like that and they were a business kind of lawyer Mm -hmm. program and they were like yeah you could name drop uh, like that's how we could say disney Mm -hmm. and things and stuff like that and like that feels very pixar and shit Mm -hmm. because they're just like general like just names kind of like everyone knows this and funny enough, that's how uh, like the word escalator became such a thing. Really? That was actually like a brand. Huh. So calling all the moving staircases escalators, eventually this got so overpopular that now everything that's a moving stair, mm. you could call that. Like, like Band-Aids and Kleenex? Yep. Stuff like huh. that. So I thought that was interesting on how they can name drop all the companies and yeah. say this toy is made by Mattel or yeah. whatever oh. and they can't get in trouble because it's just because they're not profit they're they're not making profit off mm-hmm. of it they're not selling a toy marketing as like Mattel yeah they're just trying to you know make it feel like more cohesive in the world that's kind of interesting and um. do you know Andy's last name oh for 100 points Andy's last name. Yeah. It's like, it's not really mentioned. I believe you could see it on a birthday card or something. Or you hear the mom say, this is Mrs. And I'm not sure if it's in Toy Story 1 or 2. (laughs) Is it Phillips? No, it's Davis. Andy Davis. 
Oh man, I don't know. I I yeah, I don't think I ever heard of that. Yeah, and <laughs> this is funny. I found this earlier today. Mm-hmm. Did you know that there's there's toys of Andy? No. <laughs> Yeah, there's toys. Like from the first Toy Story movie? Yeah, there's toys of Andy. (laughs) And I think that's so funny because here it's like he's the real person. And Mm -hmm. it's like they made toys of him. I'm going to get it up right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's terrifying. (laughs) It is very terrifying. Why would you want Andy? I don't know. But, yeah. Um Andy has toys. <laughs> well, Andy has toys, and then there's toys of Andy. So, uh, speaking of like toys and stuff, right? There's a few toys that were not allowed to be in Toy Story. Yes. Do you know which ones? Um, I know Barbie wasn't allowed originally, not until yeah. the second movie. Mm-hmm. They had to get actual special permission because, just like I said, you can name drop like Mattel and mm-hmm. stuff. But Barbie is not only a brand, but the character. Do you know why they also didn't want her in there? Because girls are gross. Because uh, at the time, they didn't want Barbie to have a voice. Because they wanted any girl to pick up a Barbie and voice that character. Mm, well, well, they certainly fucked that up in the second one. So. And do you know who like um, the second one was? No. Uh, it was. They didn't want. I think it was Hasbro. They don't want G.I. Joe to be a thing. Oh, okay. Which, because, and the reason they didn't want that is because they didn't want a G.I. Joe to get blown up in Sid's backyard. So that's why they use Combat Carl instead. Combat Carl. Yeah. Um, do you know the names of some of Sid's toys? Um, I know there's Babyface. Babyface. Um, what's, what's the other ones? Uh, well, you have the hooker. <laughs> Is that the actual name? No, no, but it's basically like that's what they like get to, you know. It's legs with like a fucking fishing pole. Uh huh. Um, and I was talking to, I was talking to the person that we watched like the movie with, and I was like, the toys are like fucking terrifying and stuff, but they call Ducky the Pez dispenser with yeah. like the bobbing thing. Um, then. Woody name drops the guy on the skateboard as Roller Bob. Yeah. Which uh is such a good name. Roller Bob. Roller Bob. And so these are ones I had to look up. I did not know these. Um, So you have the head on that little baby roller thing. That's Jingle Joe. (laughs) The little frog thing that they wind Uh up is just called the frog. Okay. Hand in the box. Um, And then you have like the little insect piloting like... I don't even know. Oh, yeah, yeah, It's called Rockmobile. And then there's this little, like, it looks like half a car or something. It's called Pump Boy. Pump Boy? <laughs> it's this one. And oh, yeah. when I, like I saw guy. it, I went, the fuck? I don't remember that in the movie right. at all. And so I had to go back and watch a scene earlier today. And I was like, oh, there it is. Oh, that's one of the ones that stood out to me the most because he's just like, <laughs> yeah. So, so those are all of Sid's toys. And we never see them again. I'm glad we get recognition, though. Yes. I wanted to talk about them a little bit because they are the most standout looking characters of all. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think. But there are toys of them, too. So, I, I if I remember correctly from my research, Hasbro turned down an offer to make the toys because they didn't want to make these like yeah Sid's toys and stuff i think the brand that did them are akin to happy meal toys yeah they're small yeah i think like disney went off and like made their own like deal and stuff yeah and so i have a question for you Mm -hmm. have you ever owned any toy that was in toy story buzz buzz i own buzz okay i own pretty much almost all of them really yeah i had a rex i i had a mr potato head um, I never had a slinky dog because never could find anything like that. And uh-huh. I don't think that was like, they, I don't know if they profited off of that one. I feel like slinky dog was like low on the bar. So it so, wasn't sold around me. I think if, if I remember correctly, all most of the toys in Annie's room are real toys. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for slinky dog, 
they changed its appearance, so it could look more. It could so it could look better and, re- and to the voice. Yeah, because it has like that little bit of woodenness yeah, to so it. Yeah, so they they made the slinky dog look more like a hound dog. Yeah, um, and um, I had a Woody and a Buzz. I had two Buzz Lightyears and I had one Woody. Mm, yeah, I only had one Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, and when I got the Woody, I remember I was young, and I remember it didn't work when you pulled the string. <laughs> oh, really? It wouldn't work. So my dad just like wrote down all of Woody's quotes, <laughs> and he was like, "When you pull it, just say it," because <laughs> we were like. We don't got money to buy you another one. Yeah. Um. So here's more like uh, trivia for you, right? So Billy Crystal was originally offered the chance to voice Buzz Lightyear, but he was like, "Nah, I don't want to do that." Thank God. And after he finished seeing the movie, he he said that that was like the biggest mistake of his career. Yeah, thank God. Not saying Billy Crystal doesn't have a good voice, mm-hmm. but. The buzz I know today would be very different. Yeah, and then like after hear, hearing that, John Lasseter um, called Billy's house and offered him the role of Mike Wazowski. They're like, "Oh, I feel bad for you." Yeah, and uh, Tom Hanks recorded his dialogue during breaks of Sleepless in Seattle and A League of Their Own, and he didn't want to record dialogue during the breaks of Philadelphia or Forrest Gump because he felt he shouldn't do comedic roles. In between minutes of playing serious roles. When really, he's not playing a very comedic role Mm-mm. as Woody. No. That's my hot take. Which is insane. That's like... Because Woody's not inherently funny. He's no. just more of like a dick. Mm-hmm. So like the things that happen around him is funny. Yeah. So here's like... So that take comes from like the original idea of Woody. I don't know if you knew like any of like the history of Woody or what he was supposed to be. But he was originally supposed to be a ventriloquist dummy. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and he was supposed to be like uh, this toy that was like a tyrant over all the other toys and like bossed everyone around. Which we get in three. Yeah, and he was supposed to be like a really big asshole. Damn. Mm-hmm. Well, he still is an asshole, but like. And uh, when. So when they were redesigning some of the characters, they introduced Buzz. Which was originally called Lunar Larry. I do know about Lunar Larry. Yeah, and he wasn't supposed to be like this cool, grizzly, like space ranger. He was supposed to be kind of like a, like an old nineteen fifties like space guy, like it, like oh, like like Star Command and like in space and stuff like that. Oh, okay, he was supposed to be like very like over the top. Gotcha. But um, when Tim Allen like was recording the lines, he kind of like took the role in his own way, and it became way better. Yeah, I know. I definitely like the direction that they did for Buzz. He's he's like that cool guy. Yeah, and I think Woody was originally supposed to be um, he was a ventriloquist, but he wasn't a cowboy. Oh. And they were like. Well, let's make Woody a cowboy, so it's kind of like space versus like the future versus the old west. Yeah, which is a cool dynamic that they ended up getting. It is cool. Yeah, like I'll I'll say it once, I'll say it again. Toy Story series is completely built in the idea of change. Yeah, you know, you change with like what's trendy, what's mm-hmm. new. It it's funny because like I don't have too many little kids in my family, but. My fiance does. Mm-hmm. And it's cool seeing whatever they're into. Yeah. And it's like how different it was for me growing up. Like I picked like a couple things I really liked mm-hmm. and I stuck with that for like ever until I grew out of it. Mm-hmm. But then when I grew out of it, I was a teenager. But like uh, her like little cousin is like every month. It's like a new thing he's into. Really? Like he's into Ben 10 before he <laughs> was into like a like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. And he would go like all out. Hmm. And I never did that as a kid. No. Mainly because I guess like I didn't have the internet growing up really. Yeah. I got internet when I was like 12, but I dial up. Yeah, I can see that. I, as a kid, I grew up on like old VHS tapes of really old shows. Yeah. So I was always like 10 years too late to know like the trends. Yeah, no, I never <laughs> was into trends at all. Like yeah. not even like I wasn't into them, but like, yeah, I was late to them because of what I had. Mm-hmm. I had a ton of hand-me-downs. Oh, yeah, same. Because like I didn't even really care for them, but it was like the toy I had the most of. Mm-hmm. Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Yeah, because my brother was a big Turtles fan, mm-hmm. but they were almost like exclusively put away out mm-hmm. of reach from me. Man, that just brought back a memory of 
when you said Power Rangers, I remember one time me and my dad were at the Swami, and he bought me a Power Rangers toy at one stand, and it was like fifty cents or something. So I was like, oh, sick. And then we kept walking, and another stand had a different Power Ranger. And, like, a third stand had a different one. So I, now I had three. And, like, the whole night was me, like, going around to every stand being like, the set has to be here somehow. And they were all from the same set. I don't know if you remember these toys, but it was, like, the Power Rangers who was, like, helmet was, like, here. And if you press, like, their button, their helmet goes into their body and, like, their face comes out. Oh, it flips. Yeah, it I flips. know exactly what you're talking about. And it was those. And I was looking for, like, the last two the whole night. And, like, oh, never found them. Damn. And it was just, like, so funny that three different people had three different Power Rangers That's toys. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the ones that were, like, I'd say, like, they're, like, half a foot tall. Mm. And I, it was, like, the first generation Power Rangers. Okay. And they had a button on the back, uh -huh. and they all did a different karate chop move. Oh, that's cool. Like, I remember, like, the red one, it, like, did, like, a horizontal, and the blue one did, like, a vertical, hmm. and the green one kicked. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's awesome. And I remember I remember the black, the black Power Ranger and the yellow Power Ranger, their buttons, I had to hold them in, and then they did stuff. Like, they weren't, like, huh. they weren't action press. They were, like, a hold in. And then, like, they would spin or something. Huh. That's cool. Yeah. And even though I wasn't into Power Rangers, that's the toy. I used to just pretend they were something else. Yeah. Well, like, you have to, right? Yeah. Like, I'd be like, this isn't the Red Power Ranger. This is so-and-so from this <laughs> show I'm currently. Uh, here's another piece of trivia. So, Ham's voice actor, John Ratzenberger, later would go on to voice a character in every Pixar film since. Be becoming Pixar's good luck charm. And Pixar is the only animation studio to have a particular voice actor in every movie. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah, he's in every Pixar movie. He unfortunately passed away. Yeah. Huh. I wonder... What, I'm going to actually look and see what he plays. Like, next time I watch a Pixar movie, yeah. I'm going to be like, what movie does he... like? Well, what role do they play in this movie? That's cool. I like when movies do, like, the good mm -hmm. luck charms and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. I like that they kept him because he has like a very uh, iconic voice, I feel like. Oh, 100%. So here's a, a fun fact about my, my boy, the toy shark. So the toy shark wearing Woody's hat proclaims, look, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. The reference, this reference is a cowboy eating vulture in one of Gary Larson's The Far Side daily comic strips from the early 1980s where he says... Hey, everyone, look at me. I'm a cowboy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so it's like a really old callback. Um, when they were making Toy Story, they only employed 110 people. Compare that to The Lion King, which was made with 800 employees. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, so they're like... Like I said, like they wanted to trash this movie. It was very bare bones. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of life that gets put into like more and more as mm -hmm. Toy Story goes on. Because if you look at it, Toy Story, is pretty much like twenty toys moving around at mm -hmm. once, which is still pretty impressive for ninety five. Yeah. But I think it's it's pretty interesting how the scale gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, it kind of like. I'm already, like, not the biggest fan of, like, Disney and, like, just a company. So, it it irks me a little that they, like, took this project that was, like, almost like a passion project. Twisted into something that everyone hated because of themselves. They twisted this into something that was unwatchable. And then they were like, what the fuck happened? How could this happen? Yeah. And then they want to trash this project that wasn't even theirs to begin with. Yeah, uh, Disney's a tough one because I like a lot of the Disney movies, uh -huh. but they're a tough one to deal with mm -hmm. because especially now that they own Marvel. Oh, yeah. And like, it's like as a fan of things, it's like you want things to be done right. Yeah. But like when you take like creative freedom and mm -hmm. like the liberty to do what you want, you tend to piss people off. Yeah. And it sucks because like just like i said like i do not want them going into the old movies and try to fix mm. them up and shit or like there we don't need live action this and live action that 
you know, look at fucking Lion King from 2019. Like, what a dumpster fire. Well, you know why they're doing live actions? Because they're stupid? No, because that's, that's how <laughs> they hold on to, like, the rights to I, those properties. I guess. It's like Spider-Man. Like, if they don't make... If Sony doesn't make Spider-Man every, like, six or eight years, they lose the rights to Spider-Man. Well, good. Because <laughs> sometimes, like, you need to lose the rights yeah. to things. You know? Yeah, like, I think Disney, right... Mickey Mouse is supposed to be in the public domain, but yeah. Disney is like, they're such like fucks that they found a way to like keep Mickey Mouse. Yeah, because I believe, um, so like what, 1920 Mickey Mouse was like first like named or maybe before then. I, I have no idea. But I do know in 20, it was like a big thing in like the 2010s or 2020 uh-huh. where like they were like Mickey Mouse, public domain. Yeah. And then I think they f- sued or they did something to mm-hmm. like. Basically, it's like, okay, you can include images. Yeah. But if you ever profit off of Mickey Mouse, we're coming from you. And you can't, like, make Mickey Mouse say things that we didn't say. Yeah, and Disney is just, like, this huge company. So they could just get away with basically anything at this point. Yeah. It's it's so funny because, like, when you get, like, big companies like, like Disney and Nintendo and how, like, how, like, they have such a... Sh- stupid grip on things mm. it's like come on man like you're not even moving with the times no. anymore it's annoying it is it's so annoying but that's all the trivia i have so let's get into our final thoughts so let's start with you nick okay so toy story one is iconic it's classic it's mm-hmm. bougie it's everything mm-hmm. it's perfect you would say it's a perfect movie. Mo and you know, I'll save my opinion on the second movie. But I love, I love Toy Story, mm-hmm. uh, one. Um, it's fun to talk about like, oh, like when do the toys come alive yeah. and stuff like that. It's like a fun little world. Yeah. That like, movies that revolve around like other inanimate objects don't really like have that kind of mm-hmm. lore with them. Like Brave Little Toaster is fun. But, like, there's not a lot of thought-provoking things. Yeah. Or, like, there's... Am I saying, like, Toy Story is deep? It's just, like, it, when, when you sit down and you talk about the concept, you're like, is there... Like, there's a lot to talk about. There's a mm. lot of, like, arguments and a lot of, like, like back and forth that you could do. So, I like I like the way Toy Story 1 has aged. Yeah. So, from 1995 to 2020, I will give it... It belongs in a collection. Okay. So... I've I've never owned Toy Story. I owned Toy Story two on VHS. Okay. And I think it only because it was a gift. So I didn't watch this movie growing up that much. To me, when I ever associate Toy Story, it's always because I'm like at an after school thing, or it's at like a dentist or doctor's office. Okay. And it's like on in the background. So I don't have like this connection like most people do um like other pixar movies right i love pixar like pick almost any pixar movie could make me cry (laughs) but toy story has yet to do that yeah i guess like don't want to interrupt your final Uh thought toy story doesn't have that no at all like toy story 2 has a moment where i do tear up but like toys and but like toy story 1 does not have that moment and I, I and think... and my question right before you give your final uh-huh. thought is if it had that moment that you teared up a little bit, would you think of this movie different? Yeah. Oh, of course, because I, I mean, I feel like it almost had that moment with Buzz. I feel like if they lingered on Buzz's depression and his like existential crisis of, it's almost like when a like when a three year old wakes up one day and then they realize, oh my god, I'm alive, <laughs> and like right before that they're. Like, this happy-go-lucky baby, and now it's just, like, I have consciousness. And it's, like, you have to face, like, that for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> that you're alive. It's tough when you're three, man. Yeah. So, I I was, like, on the verge with Buzz of, like, feeling something deeper. But I think just because it cuts so fast to, like, something comedic right after, it, was, it lost it for me. I do like Toy Story. Um... I am curious after rewatching all four of them, I want to give them like an official ranking. But I, I would say Toy Story because I like it. It's so short. 
I would add it to the collection if Sick. I got it for a good price. Let's go. <laughs> so, I know maybe there, there was like a try to convince you mm-hmm. to put these in the collection. I feel like Toy Story 1 doesn't need much of a... No. Kid. I feel like if you... I don't know if you because like you have childlike tendencies. You mm-hmm. have, you build Lego still. You have mm-hmm. toys. You have knickknacks, and I also have them on my desk. Uh-huh. So I feel like for that vibe, I feel like Toy Story One will fit. Like if you have like that like so that childlike behavior yeah. a little bit, and there's nothing wrong with that because like growing older and getting stingy with that shit is like it blows my mind. Yeah, because like hold on to something that's like youthful, mm-hmm. and Toy Story is one of those things that like. I will watch them even if I don't even have kids. Yeah. Because they make me feel like not younger, but like I do get a little happy watching yeah. them. It brings you back, right? Yeah, it brings you back. And I guess if you don't have the connection to them, I understand why you might not like them as much as other yeah. people. But I am curious, maybe later we could watch movies, but like is there one that like you have that maybe like like this is like the series that like will take you back if it's not Toy Story? A series that takes me back to my childhood. Or like an animated movie or a movie from your childhood. They're oh, like, this man. takes me back. Because like yeah. Toy Story is definitively mine and Lion King. They'll take me back. Lion King for sure. Um, Lion King is one of those things that where in my family, my dad always like boasts. It's like, that's the first movie you've ever seen. Because oh, apparently that's when, cool. when I was like... A really small child he like got that movie and he was like this is gonna be his first movie he's gonna that's see. cool so like I, like as a fact now i know blanking that's my first movie i've ever watched my entire life um so that one always takes me back to like i guess a happier time there are movies that like take me back to certain moments in my life oh yeah i can see that like for some reason like uh i, I think it's like the movie's called like Barto. Barto. It's like a bat. Never heard of that before. Uh, it's a very. Is it scary? No. Oh, Bartok. I mean. Bartok. Yeah, this one. I have never seen that white thing before in my life. It's a bat. I think it's a spinoff from Anastasia. Okay. And that's one of those movies where very vague memories. But watching that always brings me back to, like, my parents splitting up. And, like, that's the movie I watched oh, as that was happening. Gotcha. So, like, for some reason, Bartok, like, even though it's a very obscure, straight-to-video, like, video movie, it, like, lingers in my memory. That That is so interesting. Yeah. And shit like that happens. There's, like, certain things, like, certain episodes of shows, I can remember exactly what I was doing at that point. Yeah. I know. It's funny enough because... When we get to Toy Story 3, Uh that will take me back to a moment in my life. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'll save that for then. But that that is really funny, like, how movies do that. It's cool, you know. But I feel like, as, like, an adult, never lose that. Mm -hmm. So that's my philosophical thing for the podcast. And that's, like, the point of the movie collection, right? When this movie collection started, I was, like, I've always had movies growing up. Uh, my dad, every time we would go to a movie theater, his whole thing was, like, after the movie, he would we'd go, like, walk to the car. He would always be like, oh, what was your favorite part? That was my favorite part, too. Yeah, we're going to get that when it comes out on DVD. That's cool. So that was, like, our thing. All right. So, like, that's what started my movie collection. And there's a couple movies I have that he bought me as a child and are still in the collection. Okay. Like, Garfield's one of those. Cool. Garfield, for sure, is, like, one of the movies that take me back as a kid. And I'm like... This is one of the movies I really enjoy. I know it's a terrible movie, but, like, no matter how bad it is, it always brings me back to, like, a happier place in my life. Gotcha. And I, if it wasn't for, like, him doing that things for, all those things for me, I don't think, like, my connection to movies would be as strong as it is now. Okay. So, like, the reason I started, like, this movie collection, it's originally started as, like, these are movies that, if I have kids, I would want to show them, like, these are the movies that I love. And, like, these are yeah. movies that have special meaning to me yeah the movies that made us kind of thing yeah the that, movies that made us <laughs> it's cool yeah so like and um, i feel a little sad that toy story was never one of those movies because of like how it was introduced to me yeah it wasn't int- i i saw it per by accident 
in that commercial of a different VHS tape I had. Yeah. And so, and it's like it, it it stinks, but it's also like that's just how like you grow up different, you yeah. know? Like you watch Bar Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Toy Story. The but like I grew up like I didn't watch a couple like very fan favorite mm-hmm. movies like Treasure Planet, Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Never seen those. Um um Road to El Dorado? Yeah. Never seen it. But like I know people love those movies, mm-hmm. but when I go back and I watch them as an adult for the first time, it's like I have to try to picture would younger Nick like this? Yeah. And that's a very tough thing to do because I know watching Toy Story all the way to Toy Story 4, mm-hmm. I know what younger Nick would like because I have like the background to yeah. it. So it's like when you don't watch it, like I showed my roommate years ago, Wally. Mm-hmm. I started like I was getting a little like we're, <laughs> weird drinking, mm-hmm. and I was getting a little like emotional. And he'd never seen it, and he was like, Hard. "What's wrong with you?" So it's like I get that. So it's like when when I get a little emotional about Toy Story two and three, uh-huh. it's like, why are you crying? You know what movie gets me really emotional if I if I'm drinking, is <laughs> over the top. <laughs> I I remember I was like I was fucking plastered, dude. And I I watched over the top all day. Like oh. I had like the it was on streaming and like as soon as it was over I restarted it. And That's I was so like funny. I was like crying and I was like the world doesn't meet anyone halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can meet me halfway. And it's like it's like such a like a dad and son story. Yeah. So I was just like I was like, I'm, I'm dying over here. I need to put on pause. But I am glad we're rewatching Toy Story because it is like, I feel like it's unlocking memories. Yeah. Of stuff that happened, and I'm very curious rewatching Toy Story two, because it's very widely known that I don't like Toy Story two. And it's very widely known that it is one of the best sequels ever made. Yeah. So I'm curious if like rewatching this and like researching it and like remembering more about it. If it's going to unlock, like, a block memory of, like... Of why you hate it. Yeah, it's like, maybe I watched this at a terrible point in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I'm very curious. And I don't know why. It's like, when I re- when we rewatched Toy Story 1, I recognize that it's a good movie. And I recognize that it's, like, I appreciate everything it's done. And I appreciate all the jokes. And I like all, like, the wordplay and stuff. And I, I, I don't want to say, like, I love this movie. Because maybe if, if I rewatch it more, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, this is one of the best movies ever made. But Toy Story 2, I, I know it, like, beat for beat. Because I've watched that one the most. I probably might not be able to watch it with you. Because yeah. of how much I could quote that movie. Yeah, I feel like I could quote it a lot, too. I've so watched funny. it so much. And it's like and it's funny because like, I feel like we both watch this movie a lot. And, and we have such it. two different, like, camps of, yeah. like... So I am I am very I'm very excited for next week to sit down and watch it. Yeah, I am too. Um, man, I feel like we rambled so long. Well, we did say that these were going to be longer episodes. Yes. So that was Toy Story one. We both like it. Uh, it will definitely be added to the collection if I could get it for a good price. Um, next week we are watching Toy Story two. If you're unaware, this whole month of May is Toy Story month. Yes. So we're watching Toy Story 1 through 4. We're giving the wheel a break. If you want to watch along with us, feel free to do so. We're always happy to hear some feedback. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, Anything else you want to say, Nick? I think that might be it. Yeah. Exciting news. We might have some guest next week right i believe we will have guests next week yeah so it is it'll be interesting to see the dynamic change of like this podcast yes so i feel like for this week going into next week we should try to outline a little bit so we don't derail constantly yeah i'm down to have like more structure um not even more structure just more like uh yeah i guess structure Mm -hmm. yeah I guess when you throw a structure to it, it makes me feel, like, gross. Like, yeah. I'm not in school anymore. Yeah, so, like, we'll talk to you guys next week. Oh, God. Hopefully we get a Mrs. Potato Head. Oh, my God. Oh, hubba man. hubba. A man can dream, can't they? Yes. All right. See you guys later. Peace out. Bye. Bye.